was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient Didn't know the love of God was at hand But now I can say If you, you are discouraged Struggling just to make it through another day You've got to let it go you got to let it go you got to let it all go And this is what you got to say Ow! Oh, I release and I let it go Let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide I'm only here for God No more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light And I'm free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I release and I let go Let the Spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only to kick off a service let me tell you yeah that's fantastic thank you all that joy and energy exactly what we need today well I'm Colleen DeVries and I'm a practitioner here I've been a practitioner for nine years and I'm so happy to be able to uh, host and conduct this service today and hopefully you'll see we've got some surprises and and have a little joy in the service itself so when we leave we leave with some things that remind us that we've been here and how we've celebrated together. So I welcome everyone today because I'm welcoming you to the CSL Parker home. Because ever since I joined this center nine years ago, I never left. I came in for one service and I've been here ever since because it's my home. So we welcome you. Now, do we have any uh, individuals that this is their first time in joining us in this celebration? Right there, right there? If, if we do, we have a handout and um, Irene, our usher, will get that to you so that you get some insight into what we are. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> So this morning is all, all about love, okay? So love can be shown in so many ways. And I think the most important thing that we can do to start off our day today on love is to share it with each other and to welcome each other. So we do that. We do that whether it's hugs, bumps, salutes, knuckles, whatever it is that you are comfortable in doing, please greet each other this morning and let's get that joy and that energy going among us. Oh, it's so wonderful to greet each other. Exactly. And know that we're here to celebrate. So next in our morning service, we always have our announcements. And this morning, I have one key one and that I'll share with you. Then after that, I'm going to just let you know, always go to our website. Our website has everything. And it, it's a way to plan your calendar. 
right? Because we have, we have classes in session now, we'll be planning classes in the future, but right now I wanna share this one event with you that's next Sunday, okay? So see, we're going to be presenting a secret meditation and healing practices session of Ancient Chinese Enlightened Masters by Sifu Douglas Sutton, who has studied the lineage of 2,500 years of ancient masters. What a great study. And to have someone share that with us. So the presentation is Sunday. Put it in your calendars, January 22nd. It's after service, so you'll have time to go get a bite to eat if, if we don't have enough here, right? And it's from 1.30 to 3.30. So two hours of a great investment for you. And it's at the Parker Public Library. That's on Main Street, if you haven't been there. And it's in their conference room. And I know that when I walk up to the desk and I say what my event is, they're so fast to tell us exactly which conference room. It's a beautiful library. And you can actually register for it. We would just love that because it's at our CSL website. So now, did I get it right? Anything you'd add? Got it? OK. Well, with that, I think you'll be very excited to know that we're going to go into more music now and celebrate joy through music. <laughs> I'm Dr. Vern, another practitioner here, and I'll be doing the reading and then a meditation with you. The reading comes from a book called Love and Law. It's a compilation of Ernest Holmes' works, and he did a lot of seminars and evening ga gatherings with students and people that were really just interested in hearing uh, what he had to say, and so they recorded a lot of these seminars that he did, and this is a part of that. He says here, this is all about love, Colleen. If you could see your thought and take a picture of it and your conditions, you would see no difference between them. We cannot make affirmations and denials for 15 minutes and spend the other 23 hours and 45 minutes denying the thing that we have affirmed and affirming the thing we have denied and obtain the results that we would like. On another page. He said you have got to be on good terms with yourself most of the time. That is not easy. There are not many people who are that way. You have got to have a great perseverance with yourself. 
You have got to set yourself on the path again and so get along with yourself better. And let yourself have a chance. Never condemn yourself. Forgive yourself if you have done wrong. And one of my favorite quotes from this book, I have, most of my books are worn out and I have a lot of markers, so I'm fumbling a bit. I'm fumbling a lot, actually. I found it. Every time you say, I am, it is immediately supported and you cannot say a word or think a thought that is not omnipotent. And that is why you bring upon yourself the thing you fear and why you bring to yourself the thing you want. And this is the only place in Ernest Holmes' writings I've ever seen him or read that he had said this. He said, when 51% of your thinking is health and life and power, that day, 51% will swallow up and re erase the other 49%. The day you as an individual by 51% of thought pass beyond this perception of limitation, everything in the universe is yours. And you become it. That day poverty will desert you and you will be emancipated forever. The day 51% of your thinking is happy Misery shall depart and never return. Let's go into prayer now. And I know that as we bless this day, this day blesses us. Every thought we think, every loving thought we have all love connects us with the divine and it connects us with each other so in our times of division now let's shift gears let's move from judgment and division into love and peace in harmony, in all things good. Let's be living examples, knowing that if our lives were on trial, that we were on trial for our we happy people, loving people, what would be the evidence to support that? I know that this day we go forward with adequate, abundant evidence that we are indeed loving children of a loving God. This I know to be true. I know it to be true for you, and I know it to be true for me. I bless you, and I bless your lives knowing that we are the great examples, we are the healers of this planet, and we say yes to every chance we get to demonstrate love in action. Hmm. Just breathing into that knowledge and that truth. I invite each of you to join me in blessing this prayer by declaring with me, and so it is, and so we let it be. This is, this is a song written by Michael Gott and Karen Drucker.
In this moment, in this place, I remember who I am. Letting fear and worry fall away from me, I open my eyes and I see. that sets us free there is only love when I lose myself when it seems I've lost my way when I go inside and quiet my mind I hear spirit gently say there is only love There is only love Love that heals Love that sets us free There is only that sets us free there is only love there is only love there is only sweet love love that heals love that sets us free All right, first thing is an administrative thing. Does everyone have a plush animal? Yeah. Everyone has one? Any, anyone who doesn't, Irene has the basket there. Everyone has to have a plush animal. I'm going to tell you just a real quick little story. Um, as many of you know, I come from a farm in Minnesota. And my father was an immigrant from the Netherlands. And I went off to college. And I had a part-time job. And this couple, matter of fact, I, I, uh, I blended tobacco and I carved Mersham pipes. And uh, in doing this job, I had this wonderful couple. And they had gotten this dog. And they said this dog was a mess, that it was urinating in the house, everything was bad. They said, we can't keep it. And they asked me, he said, do you want to keep it? Well, you know, most people, they go, I don't, I don't want that dog, right? But I said, you bet I will. I will. I, being raised on the farm, I worked with cows that kicked, horses that bolted, everything that you can imagine. And from, from my lessons on the farm, everything was love. So I got that dog, I brought her to my apartment, and I hugged her and loved her, and she never, ever had an accident in my house, never. And then I had to move, though. I had to go to another apartment, and so they wouldn't allow animals. So I took the dog home, and her name was Sweetheart, okay? So I gave her to my dad, and I said, Dad, I, you know, I can't keep her. When I move again, I'll come back. I'll get her. Can you please take care of her? So he said, okay. And I, I did this on my way out. You know, I'm driving back to college, right? So it was a couple months later. It was October, 
and my dad was out harvesting corn. And he got his arm caught in the corn picker. And it was because he had a jacket that had a tear on it, right? And it caught in the pulley. But he, he was a strong man. He used to be a professional wrestler. And he was strong enough that he pulled himself away. But he seriously injured that shoulder, right? And so I, when I heard of the accident right away, I came home. And I said, Dad, you doing okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, I, and I looked around and I said, where's, where's sweetheart? Right? And he says, Colleen. Let me tell you one thing. He says, I'm not walking around out in the yard looking for a dog, calling a damn dog, sweetheart. He said, her name is now Fuzzy. <laughs> so you all got a bunch of fuzzy critters there. And the fact is, then I watched my dad lay down on the couch to take his nap, and there was Fuzzy on that injured shoulder. All love. And that's what we're focusing on today. The music couldn't have been more beautiful and perfect for us. So I want to also, though, play um, attention to the fact that we have a holiday tomorrow. What's our holiday tomorrow? Anyone know? Martin Luther King, right. And I could not resist having a quote from him to begin with. He said, you know what? He says, I have decided to stick to love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. And isn't that true? It's just so much better in life when we can love. And I decided to pull some material together from one of my favorite books. It's titled, Coming Home, The Return to True Self. And it's written by Marsha Nelson. And this is uh, raved about by uh, Deepak Chopra. And if you can get the book, I highly recommend it because I read this book when I really needed it. It was, it was after my sister passed, and I said, who am I? And this book helped me answer it. And that's the message I'm going to share with you today. In case you too, in the beginning of this year, and the, coming upon the time of love, might be asking the same questions. So the fact is that we really live uh, actually in two spirit and split realities, right? There's that reality that's our personality, and then there's that reality that Dr. Verne was encouraging us through prayer to reach for. That's our true self. Okay? So personality. Well, personality is actually our daily companion, right? It's our conscious self that we see the world through. But it has eyes of limitation. But it dutifully keeps us informed. And it keeps us informed of what we can and cannot do. So what is it? When, when we're born as babes, we are given the essence of unlimited love. Unlimited love of ourselves, unlimited love of the world. And how is it that we lose that sometimes? We don't love each other enough. We don't love ourselves. There's a, this famous country song that I've listened to repeatedly, it's a, and the line in it is, looking for love in all the wrong places. Right? And it, it was about a message of looking for love outside yourself. And of course, we in Science of Mind know we have to look for the love inside ourselves. And that personality part of us, it ha we have been trained in that personality. As we grew up, we were told there are things we could do, there were things we couldn't do. Oh, you're not smart enough, or you're not pretty enough. You can't be a model, you're not pretty enough. Oh, you're too fat, or you're not smart enough. You can't be a doctor. All of those things that went into our minds that are held in personality, those are not held in our self-love. God gave us perfect self-love. God gave us perfection as human beings to have that spirit and that love. So the true self actually uh, stands patiently, offering that unwavering knowledge that a state of vibrant well-being and unlimited possibility is really our true nature. It's a birthright that can be lived if we choose to do so. And that's the choice that we get to make every day. 
We're free to develop a spirit of consciousness that exists in a state of unlimited knowledge and unconditional love. It's an awareness based on unity, a oneness that we share with all things and all creatures. And that's what we're about here at CSL Parker, that oneness, that God, that spirit in us, of us, around us. However, we're often unconscious of this unity because our personalities are so identified with form, with the car we drive, the clothes we wear, the jewelry we have, the job we have, all of those things that make that personality. Yet the true self within each of us really experiences unity and it lives that knowing. At, their le at that level, it's very important to know there's no separation, right? Sometimes when we say we're looking for love in all the wrong places, it's because we're looking for it out there or we're thinking someone else is going to give it to us and make us feel loved and good when it's always right here. Ralph Waldo Emerson had a great quote that I thought was most appropriate. And uh, you'll know that our spiritual leader, Ernest Holmes, wrote books and consulted with Ralph Waldo Emerson often. What lies behind us and what lies before us are really tiny matters compared to what lies within us. what lies within us. So really, there's hope for us. It's all there. And in spite of the lack of conscious awareness that we might have some days, let's, let's relate it to the fact that we as humans always breathe, right? We always take in the air into our lungs. And the guidance that we, see, we receive we can always have that too. It's there. And it comes, and it comes through our intuition. And we often say, well, where does that higher guidance even come from? Well, it's the divine. It's spirit. It's knowing. It's truth. It's oneness. All of this stimulates our internal self. And so that's how we are, the true self. So there's external guidance that's there to always reconnect us if we just open up our minds and our hearts. Because you know that higher guidance? Well, it's unconditionally loving. It's unconditionally generous and willing to come to us if we allow it to. It will never force its way through that personality limitations or through our aspirations, but it's always there. And believe me, I've found that sometimes when I, I get a problem or I have a loss and I go, oh God, oh God, I need you now, right? God was always there, always in me. The science of mind, it, it's the practice that calls for a positive understanding of spirit and truth. And it's that willingness that we read about as we read Ernest Holmes, that this inner spirit is what guides us. It's that consciousness knowledge, knowledge that is perfect. And Ernest also refers to the Bible for us. And in Psalms 19, 7, it says, We must believe this is to be fact. In so far as our thought is in accord with this perfect law, it will accomplish and nothing can hinder it. And that's what we find whenever we study the words of wisdom from all spiritual leaders. It's the one common thread. It's the golden rule about love and the goodness of God. So we may use terms that are God, law, truth, divine, spirit. Whatever term we use, however, we know we can connect with what we choose to call the spiritual influence, that self. 
Matter of fact, some of us will sit there and say, well, how do I do that? Well, you know, I'm really glad to be here to tell you how, okay? Because we've got practitioners out here, right? With our white stoles on. And what we'd love to do is we'd love to spend time with you after service or any time in your life when you need to connect with that self-love, with spirit, with divine, with God, with law. It's through prayer. And we are there with you in prayer. It's through meditation. It's through taking that time for silence, for quiet, to open your mind, to let spirit in, let yourself grow. Just be quiet. Okay? And it's about living the truth. And I'm going to share a story with you about what living the truth is like. But above all, it's love. So there's a story, and it's called The World Upside Down. And the person in this story is Edith Eva Egar. Let me tell you part of her story. I had just turned 16 when my mother, sister, and I were taken into the infamous Auschwitz concentration camp. I watched with despair as they escorted my mother to the gas chambers. At that point, I felt my world turn upside down. What sustained me during this time warp of horrors were my mother's words. As she was led away, she appealed to my sister and me to live a full life. Her last words were to us. Remember, they can take everything from you except what you put in your mind. And that's what we do every day. We have that choice. What do we put in our minds? There's a, a, a sentence that I thought was very good that came out of Science of Mind. It says, what we are is God's gift to us. What we become is our gift to God. So it's how we live. And certainly, she knew how to live. And even Helen Keller, who couldn't see the world the same way we do with vision, said, all that we love deeply becomes part of us. It's the love that each of you are. Vibrant love is manifested. It's manifested in our bones, in our tissues, in our physiology of our whole body. It's your essence. It's my essence. There's no matter how complex every element of either your internal or your external realities are when they originate entirely in love. Love is the life force. The common denominator in all things and all beings. Though this life force, you are one. Through it, you are with everything. You're with everyone in the world and beyond. So self-love is so important. It is that experience of love that you are. And you are a brilliant light. And sometimes we say, well, really? Am I brilliant light? Well, th well think about the sun think about the stars. Even when the clouds, the clouds roll in, we know the sun is still shining. We know the stars are still twinkling. It's the same for ourselves. Even when we don't feel it, we are that light. We are that self-love. Because living with self-love is accepting the love that is already our essence. It is us. And by the way, it's the essence of everyone, everyone here. So at this time, I would like you to just turn. Turn to your neighbor and say, I see the love in you.
And isn't it nice that sometimes, and, and this is why it's going to be great, keep your fuzzy friends, right? Because we found that we communicate with our fuzzy friends, right? We, we may not be able to say some things to someone else or, or whatever, but a fuzzy friend helps. And, and the reason that I gave them to you is that the human nature, our mind, we learn and retain information better if we have something soft to hold on to, scientifically proven. So it was to have you hold on to that softness, which the feeling of softness brings out love. So Eva's story didn't really end there. Eva did live. And the reason she lived is she took what was in herself and her ability. She was a dancer, and she loved to dance. And she was over in one corner in the camp, and her sister was a few feet away. And she wanted to get to her sister. She didn't want to be separated from her sister. So she decided to do cartwheels. And so obviously cartwheels in that camp really got a lot of attention, right? So she went cartwheeling across, and all the guards, and even the guy that was known, the angel of death, Dr. Mengel, looked and stopped and let them reconnect with their hands to hold each other again because she took her talent and she used it through a cartwheel. So never doubt what we can do in our lives to make a difference. If we're in a stressful situation, take your love, your talent, and do something with it because it's a gift you were given for a good reason. Now, there's another person I just want to tell you a little bit about. Do any of you know Steven Spielberg? Have you ever heard of him? <laughs> okay. Well, you know Steven in, in his youth, his parents wanted him to develop his personality more than his self-love. And Stephen, from the age of eight, was fascinated with film. And he said to his parents, I am going to be a movie maker. And his parents, influencing through his personality, said, no, 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 no. No, that you're not going to make enough money that 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 creativity isn't valued now at all. You, really, you need to be a doctor or you need to be a lawyer. You need to make something of yourself, right? But as we all know, Stephen didn't stop there. Matter of fact, he's produced a whole movie about his life. And it's a wonderful movie. I encourage you to watch it. Because all the stories that he told and that he built are so meaningful and so representative, if you think about it, of what he experienced in life. And I just so happened to bring one of his friends today. He's kind of shy. Now, you know what's interesting is how many people love that story. And it's a story told about what's not really a very attractive creature. His neck's too long, his eyes are too big. And he probably, in that whole movie, said the fewest things of any actor. And yet, people loved him. Okay? Most people. We were chatting before, and... Uh, she indicated that her son wasn't very appreciative of him. But that's okay, because that's free will. That's choice, right? But this little guy, you know, he had some things to say. And the most important thing that he did all the time, which was really the title of my presentation today, is let your heart light shine. Let your heart light shine. Because he was always greeting us. I'm ETT. You are my friend. ET loves you. 
So if an alien can come and give us that message of love and do it every time, shining his light in his heart and through what he could touch us with, so can we. So keep in mind that that love can be treasured and it doesn't take a lot of words and it doesn't take just beautiful people. It doesn't take just the perfection and all the talent and the wisdom. It takes the simple heart and self. So really, I've, I loved a song that was produced off of this movie. And it was sung by Neil Diamond, is written by he and Bert Backrath. I'm just going to share a few lines out of the song about E.T.T. Come back again. I want you to stay next time, because sometimes the world ain't kind. When people get lost like you and me, I just need a friend. A friend is someone you need. But now that he has to go away, I still feel the words that he might say. Turn on your heart light. Let it shine wherever you go. Let it make a happy glow. Let it make a happy glow for all the world to see. Turn on your heart light. In the middle of a young boy's dream, don't wake me up too soon. Going to take a ride across the moon. You and me. He's looking for a home because everyone needs a place and home's the most excellent place of all. And I'll be right here if you should call me. And if you've seen that movie, you remember that Elliot, the little boy, stays with his mom, stays with his dog, and says goodbye to E.T. But what E.T. does is he takes that lit finger points it to his head, and he says, I'll be right here. And that's where our love is, too. We are always right here. So we began this day, this service here, to talk about as we begin, we need to come home. We need to return to true self. We are reminded that our true self is really pure love our beautiful music today, our wonderful readings, our beautiful prayer, all is about us here in this home. So welcome home and remember, our love is pure. It's in our minds and it's in our hearts. And be as Elliot says and E.T. says, I'll always be right here. That's God's message to us. So thank you. Just a little something here. Um, I met uh, Donna Lynn at uh, Kath Robinson's choir. And one of the things that fascinated me about Kath Robinson's choir was actually this song. And it's extremely simple. And it's um, training wheels harmony. Okay? And here's how it works. You start out at a certain note. you know, Because the, the lyrics are, we let the love wash over us, we let, we let it be. When you come to the word B, and you, you, there's two notes on the B, but this, the one that you end on, B, now you can do that, and you can go back to, we let, or you can stay there, we let it be, we let the love wash over us, we let, we let it be, then you can go there, we let the love, you can go wherever you want, you can stay, you can sing along, you don't have to, but uh, this, is, this is just kind of what we do. Uh, in Kath Robinson's uh, One Voice Choir. Come join the choir. Yeah, it, come join the choir. It She's starts the, January 26th on Thursday, 7 o'clock at Unity of Denver. We would all love to have anybody that wants to sing, come sing with us. You don't have to be like a professional or read music or anything like that. This is very grassroots. Uh, it's although, fun. Although you get to a point with Kath when she's coaching you, you get to sing with other choirs because right. uh, you're good enough. That's because right. she coaches you up to that point. So that's what she's really good at. She's also been helping us with uh, the music for this month as we create this sort of 
for creating this wonderful super highway from where we've been to to Reka, uh, who will show up, who will be here for Sunday of next month, be your music director, and we wanted to smooth that path. So here we are. So we let the love wash over us. We let we let it be. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. Starting over. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. So it's now our time of offering. And in this moment, <clears throat> it is our time to think about what we've experienced in our family, our home here. Versus reciting anything, I ask that as our ushers come around and you make your generous offering, we accept all, for we are here to do wonderful things in this community. We provide donations to the food bank. We collect clothing. We collect all types of valuable things for people that just don't have them. We support education. We tithe to other centers, whether it was in California for a flood where we give Center of Spiritual Living funds or the other crises that come throughout the world. We are here to give and give generously. So if you would, just bow your heads for a moment and give your appreciation and what you know and have received here in this Center of Spiritual Living Parker as our ushers come to receive your generous offerings. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So we give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. God is my source. God is my blessing. God gives me everything I need. I give thanks for all my blessings. God gives me everything I need. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it is. And now we just give to God 
our expression of our great gratitude for the generosity of everyone here. For we know there are many, many members who go online and give the regular contributions. We know that there are so many people here that it's not just through financial, but rather through spirit and service and offering their time, treasures, and talent is what we thrive on here at CSL Parker. So thank you, thank you God for everything. Thank you for bringing these wonderful people together for us to confirm the truth and the knowing of our oneness, our truth, our one God, and so it is. And at this moment, we will move into our benediction. And after our benediction, we will have one more beautiful song for our going forth. And before that song, I, ju I just want to express my great appreciation for this talent that brings us so much joy in music and all your passion for your wonderful art. So now we pause at this moment. And we know that we here today together have had the joy of expressing love, feeling love, and that that continues even after our service as, as we help each other. And we know that our practitioners here are here to give us their time to take us through prayer the prayer that celebrates the, trip, the prayer that heals. So please do, do take advantage of their time today because they're our prayer warriors and they love it. So we express our great gratitude again for this joyous life, for this oneness that we know from the moment we put our feet on the floor in the morning, when we watch the beautiful sunrise, when we see the smiles of our friends, our children, our neighbors, when we see the goodness of the gifts that are given to us through smiles and hugs and love, we give great gratitude. And we know that this week we go forward and we give even more of ourselves, for we will truly let our love shine and we will truly recognize this self-love that each of us has, the perfection that God gave us, and that we know is in our minds and in our hearts. We say thank you, God, thank you, God. for everything that we desire in life. It's all there, all for the asking, as much as we can imagine and as much as we can give. So please join me in saying in a robust way, and so, so it so is. is. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Oh, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that joy that I 